Okay, dear students, let me come back and begin with another numerical problem. Uh, engineering mechanics, problem set 2.4, solution to 2.52. Uh, don't look at these red parts. Huh? Huh? I just, uh, I just uh, tried to explain it, but the video uh, went wrong. So I have to explain it uh, with uh, green, uh, green ink now. Huh? Don't look at the red part for the time being. I will explain it once again with this uh, green ink. Now the statement of the problem is like this: a ball of weight W. This is a ball of weight W. It is resting on a horizontal surface which is frictionless. Its action force is vertically downward. Its weight mg is written as W. So there will be a normal reaction according to Newton's third law. So the normal reaction will be to this side. Let it be R. Now, <coughs> a ball of weight W, it rests upon a smooth horizontal plane and has attached to its center two strings A, B and A, C. The center of the ball is A. Two strings A, C and A, B are attached. A, C passes over this pulley and from it is hanging a weight Q. And A, B is horizontal. It passes over a pulley, frictionless pulley and a weight P is hanging from it vertically downward uh, uh, carry loads p and q respectively as shown in the figure if the string a b is horizontal the a b part of the string is horizontal find the angle this angle alpha that the string a c makes with the horizontal when the ball is in a position of equilibrium also find the pressure r between the ball and the plane now let uh, uh, very very simple let uh, s1 uh, is equal to tension in the part a b s1 s1 uh, it is the same string that is going to this side s1 if you consider point a will be towards left if you consider this point the same s1 will be away from the point to this side and its weight is uh, uh, vertically downward is taken as p Similarly, let S2 is the tension in the, this string. Uh, if you consider the point A, it is to this side. If you consider this point, it is to this side. It is the same string, so S2 is to this side. Now, its weight is Q. Uh, that is the pull of the earth. That is equal to its mass into G. No need to write. We'll, instead of mg, we'll write just Q. Similarly, instead of mg, for this, we'll write P. And it's instead of mg for this ball, we'll write w. Now, <coughs> now due to w, there will be a normal reaction force at, at this point of contact pointing to this side, normal to the surface at the point of contact. Now, let me draw the free body diagram at A. The free body diagram at A goes like this. <coughs> uh, this, is, this is your x-axis. This is your x-axis, this is your y-axis, A is the origin, uh, which I have shown it here. So, S1 is to this side, how S1 is P, I will explain. S2 is to this side, how S2 is equal to Q, I will explain. Now, <coughs> now let me explain that, how S1 is equal to P. Since P is not moving down or moving up, Therefore, S1 is equal to P, means S1 is holding it, holding its weight back, not to move down. Now, <coughs> if P were moving down, then its load, P, its weight, must have, should have been greater than S1 to make it move down. If this weight was moving up, then S1 would have been greater than P to make it move up. Since this load P is neither moving down or up, therefore S1 is equal to P. Similarly, in this case, since Q is neither moving up or moving moving up or moving down, therefore S2 is equal to Q. Q. If Q were moving down, then its load Q should have been greater than S2 to take it to make it move down. If Q were moving up, then S2 would have been greater than Q to make it move up. Since Q is not neither moving down or up, therefore S2 is equal to your Q. That is the understanding. So once that is known, 
So let us apply <coughs> free body diagram at A. This is the free body diagram. So from this point, if you drop a perpendicular, this will be 90 degrees. So this part will be your S2 cos alpha. How do you get that? In this triangle, if you take cos of alpha, this will be base over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse represents S2. So if you cross multiply, you get this vector, the component of S2 along positive x-axis as S2 cos alpha. And to this side is S1 is equal to P. Since it is in equilibrium, so S1 is equal to S2 cos alpha. So, of, so applying sigma x is equal to 0, S1 is equal to S2 cos alpha and S1 is equal to P. So, therefore, P is equal to Q cos alpha, cos alpha is equal to P over Q. Therefore, so alpha is equal to, so alpha is equal to cos inverse P over Q. Now, the question is, <coughs> We know from our trigonometry, sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1. Instead of theta, I have taken alpha. Sin square alpha plus cos square alpha is 1. So sin alpha, this goes to the right hand side. 1 minus cos square alpha square root of that. So let us put the value of cos alpha, which is equal to P over Q. So 1 minus P square over Q square. Take LCM Q square. Uh, Q square minus P square. Square root of that. If you take out Q, from within the square bracket, it will becomes 1 over q, q square minus p square, square root of, uh, square root of that. Now, again, uh, to make sigma y is equal to 0, from the tip of this vector, if you drop a perpendicular, this length, this length will be the component of S2 along positive y axis. Uh, and this length is same thing as this length. Means in this triangle, if you take, in this triangle, if you take sin alpha, it will be perpendicular over hypotenuse and if you cross multiply, you get this length as S2 sin alpha. This length is same thing as this length, that is S2 uh, sin alpha. So let us now apply sigma y is equal to 0. Sigma y is equal to 0 uh, means... Uh, the reaction force is to this side, S2 sin alpha is also to this side. So they are arithmetically added and that is being opposed by W. So W is equal to R plus S2 sin alpha. So W is equal to R plus S2 sin alpha. So R is equal to W minus S2 sin alpha. So S2 I just explained why this is equal to Q um, because <coughs> Q is neither moving down or moving up. So the tension force S2 is holding it back. So S2 is equal to Q sin alpha. Now put the value of sin alpha. Q, Q cancels. So I'm left with R is equal to W minus Q square minus P square, square root of that. In the question, it is asked to find out the pressure. Now, if you look at this ball, this is a spherical one. This is a surface. So the point of contact is just a point. So this force is nothing but the pressure, right? <coughs> 